Buddhism had a direct influence on Mongolian culture and arts of the 16th to 19th centuries. Applique or silic painting. Portraits of deities are created through various methods and techniques of arts, namely painting, sewing, embroidering, casting, carving, sculpturing. So today it will be all about applique, well known as silk painting. In Tibetan, it is ritang. The word re means silk. Its international term is applique. It means painting with silk. Mongolians say it, zek namal. Silk painting is actually a big independent art. Mongolians have conserved all tradition of making applique. <laughs> Applique or silk painting. It is a great pleasure to present to you a new program, part of the documentary series on four topics, which are Mongolian architecture, sculpture, applique, and fine arts of the 16th to 19th centuries. The series are initiated and created by Jenchu Dichinjung Monastery. Applique had been widely used in everyday life since ancient times. Hans it ties, wall decors, and felt mats and cushions have been preserved to this day as an incontestable evidence. This tradition has not been broken, but has been passed down from generation to generation. These were unearthed in a Noyung mountain tomb. There is really great marvelous applique. It is now preserved at Hermitage Museum, Russia. This is a world masterpiece. This work can completely demonstrate the lifestyle of nomads. Art of stitching trim or tag or with twisted thread had emerged in close connection with the unique nomadic culture which is attested by felt mat with the size of 260 to 195 centimeters belonging to the period from 3rd to 1st centuries BC that was found in a tomb in Noyung Mountain named as the Burial in Zainu Great Hans, located 140 kilometers from Ulaanbaatar. Both foreign and local travelers had left behind the notes, saying that Mongolians had decorated gay palaces of Hans and noblemen with embroidered curtains, decorated with images of peculiar animals and figures. The felt mat unveiled in Zainu tomb is considered as the first real monument of applique art conserved to this day. Having developed and perfected in the course of thousands of years, the Mongolian applique art is unique and priceless fine arts heritage of Mongolia, claim scholars. Technique of applique or zeknamal 
a big representative of the traditional creative arts of Mongolians in combination with tanka technique, created marvelous artworks with sophisticated color palette, according to scholars. One of the biggest constituents of the Mongolian Buddhist creative arts is tanka applique or silk painting. Tanka applique, in turn, is classified as applique, tanka applique, embroidery, cast applique. I think that the mastership owes to high development of Mongolians' philosophy and thinking. Tanka applique is zeft namal. It requires two processes as trimming and attaching with glue. Among appliques of the 20th century, there are four large in size applique works kept in Zandbazar Museum. Applique or silk painting is a rare, extraordinary art genre demonstrating specific artistic and creative thinking, mastership, and unique mentality and thinking of Mongolians. This decorative artwork expressing mainly respecting and deifying meanings is made by combining different colors of silk and highlighted with silk thread trims and decorated by gemstones. Therefore, it is very valuable and exquisite and differs very much from the painting. On the other hand, it requires a diligent work and patience from the master and takes a lot of time and needs a meticulous process. Mongolian particularly has a nomadic lifestyle and culture. Although tanka painting was created with natural earth dyes and had scroll rods, it could be faded over time in the cause of transportation Hence, nomads used to move from place to place, from season to season, in seeking good postulants. It is considered that applique or silk painting could develop as an independent art genre for being suitable for nomadic lifestyle. The main season of making applique on silk lies in needs for creating deities, especially in large sizes. Silk applique can be scrolled. There is even no monastery and temple to hang on that big painting. You see all higher than 20 meters, 20 meter high wall is not a thing found that easy. Some are created with 10 meters in height, some 8 and 7 meters is almost the minimum. Mostly, in this way, it is very suitable. When made with silk this way, there will no problem with keeping it, for it can be rolled up, which makes it safe from fading as well. Towards anything, perception of anything equanimously were totally different from those of Westerners. It is still same. During the lifetime and since High Saint Zanbazar, Tanka applique has been developed at intense pace. Mongolian artists have made relatively large in size appliques in a large number. Our museums have plenty of such artworks. This applique you are seeing is 130 centimeters wide and 11 meters long Dunshik 35 Buddha's Tanka applique, which was created by Ikhure capital city's masters under instruction of Tahuaybor, Has, and Gomp. Buddha Shakyamuni and 35 confession Buddha's portraits are created in the way of trimming in this artwork. In doing so, the seven treasures of Khanate, along with the eight auspicious symbols, are depicted in between six petaled flowers. Ganzai of deities symbolizes the elimination of death, calamity, illness, demons, and evil thoughts. 
only seven appliques of the Dunshik's 35 Buddhas occupies the entire wall of the Fine Arts Zanbazar Museum, which attests how giant is Dunshik's 35 Buddhas applique was as a whole. Applique is made with the Mongolian drawing technique. Ornaments such as flowers, leaves, rocks, trees, hadaks are frames with hajj or golden thread. Petite pearl strings had been used for special ornaments as well. Every piece is cut and trimmed are fitted well on the main cloth and fastened with glue and sewn down with silk thread of the same color under the edge of the trimming. By depicting the nature, season is chosen, for example, if it is summer, green color, of course, will dominate in combination with other colors. The flower must be of natural colors. Since applique is made of silky, tinsel thread, and even with gemstones, gold and silver, contrasting colors are lowered. Thereby, no empty space is left on the black background. As a tradition, bright red, blue, green colors are used in perfectly fit combination to create an applique. Appliques are devoted to mainly religious topics, in particular, ten hangals or protected deities, Dunshek's 35 Buddhas, wish-fulfilling gem or Tanzai, and all other deities, Buddhist symbols are mostly illustrated. When creating images of a deity, no matter by which method of painting or appliquing, sculpturing or casting, everything must be done correctly. Then it would be said as the sublime art. In general, iconography, tanka painting are the fundament for everything. So why is Mongolian tanka applique so exclusive? Hence, the creation process was always instructed by masters of Buddhist arts, the color palette, structural grid, illustration, expression, distinction of thin and thick trims, edges, all these are perfectly combined and matched. Sutra sets out three sudden dangers, three dangers to overcome in long and three dangers to overcome in short term. Therefore, it is really dangerous without knowing. Applique technique is used for simple things as well. Mandala in terms of structure can be classified as single framed, double framed, triple framed, quadruple framed and integrated. This applique was made by method of fiber trimming, where coral and pearl were used for decorating bodies of the gods. A mandala is a depiction of the cosmic universe and realms of deities. The word mandala made up of two Sanskrit words. Manda meaning essence and la meaning container, which means realm that protects the essence. In Buddhist religion, deities are divided into Yatam deities, Pagan deities, and protector or missioner of Buddhist teaching. The mandala or representation of the cosmic universe is created to invite Yatam deities and receive power of deities' salvations. The mandalas symbolizes body, mind, and speech. Body mandalas are two-dimensional representations of three-dimensional patterns or structures. Mind mandala means creating the mandala in the mind and guiding the mind towards it. 
where this decree or Tang Mandala means that creating realm of certain deity through meditating with power of chanting. Mandala is depicted in different ways depending on essence and symbols of different deities. However, there are the main structural concepts and the parts depicted in different structures are stupa or center of mandala, temple and top in which deities housed. Mandala is designed as the cosmos wheel and created in accordance with principles of balance, yang yin, the five elements, wood, fire, earth, metal and water, and astrology. In all times, Mongolians would never use every available silk, but natural pure silk made from silkworm. Red and yellow silk fine binds facing is sewn on the edges of an applique. By doing so, it is meant to keep all the new school's traditions. Old school is the Nyamapa sect, also known in Mongolia as the Red Hat sect founded by Padma Sampawa or Lawam Badam Jonai in Mongolian. Later, Giluk or Yellow Hat sect was founded by Tsongkhapa. This is named as the new school. Yellow and red frames are indispensable for symbolizing all the new schools. It represents that the red sect and yellow sect coexist in harmony. Buddha's Goshun or Halo has fixed size. In front of deities, Goshon or Halo, executed in strict accord with the size, gate shaped exit is depicted with fine silk. There is a belief that this is designed for Buddhas to come in and out. As a tradition, a circle around Buddha is named as Goshon or Halo. A sewing technique is also important, whether to stitch further, closer, or loosely. So entirely is likely to form humps, and in contrary, too loose stitch makes the cloth distort and sag. Stitching techniques should be learned to under the instruction of a master. There are many types of sewing applique, such as embroidery, knot stitch, couching stitch, and so on. The value of applique lies in structural grid, design, and type of fabric. Outline must be very accurate. Well, design is put on a paper. Silk fabrics are prepared of various colors attributive to the Buddha and deity. In the past, master would make a special trip to acquire precious silk and fabrics for applique. Fine, very well woven, good quality silk fabric are cut by flowers, petals, and every details that must be are cut in pieces and in various colors and fitted and attached to main cloth background. Upon starching with the papyrus starch and making it a little rough outline are copied in a way of perforating on it. After perforating the lines, the trim, it is always possible to twist and spin it from the fine to thick. There is a triple trim, woven with three threads and attached in the middle to make trim. It can be made of double spun, very fine floss. So various trims can be made this way. Trims are made that way. So if green exists in trim, it can be used for sky. Red trim for dark red or with dark red thread. So the background is a silk fabric of certain color. Trim is bent over the edge, folded and attached to the back side with glue, assembled on a special fabric together, going on couching. Applique, widely known as the scroll painting in Mongolia, occupies an important position. It is a part of the sewing art with its complex technique.
to create an applique, firstly, artists should sketch the design, and after deciding the design of the applique, makes it in two copies. Afterwards, every image and detail of one copy is carefully cut and prepared. Then the original copy is painted with gouache while highlighting every single line, frame, pattern and images with different colors. The next step is to prepare silk, cotton fabrics cut in precise size and shape of details then hardened with papyrus starch and attached to the base fitting well. Edges are bent and glued then. In appliques consisting of many details, marks are put on where the edges meet. When creating applique, direction of the fabric, no matter whatever fabric is used, must be in one way. Otherwise, the color will change. So the every detail elaborated this way are fitted well and sewn down on the base, trimming edges with thread of the same color as the trim. Kuretzeg or trim is sewing not tight and not loose but even end with small stitches. Tag or trim must be triple, spun with silk threads. It is important to make it with bright colors to separate it from the base. Hence, tag or trim is frame of the applique. There were many techniques, quilting, embossing. For instance, short cape of shanto and apron were made in a way of quilting like 3D. Second, exclusively trimming technique, thereby light and shadow were distinguished with trim by way of soft color transition. Third, there was a traditional painting silk with special dye, slowly creating color transition. There is a technique where details are attached to the base without using trims. Traditions also exist where method of trimming is combined with embroidering. Nine gemstones in combination with metals are also inlaid as well. As a tradition, the crown and other accessories of deities and Buddhas were made of gold, silver, coral and other precious gemstones. Applique is decorated with coral, pearl, turquoise, lapis lazuli, gold and silver to make it splendid. Striking representative of all these techniques is Palton Hamo or Sri Devi Tanka Applique kept in Fine Arts Museum. This Tanka Applique is unique for it is made by inlaying nine precious gemstones including gold, silver. Body accessories were made by inlaying corals and pearls. Parasol was made from peacock feeders. Symbolic meaning of the parasol fashioned from peacock feeder is to protect from everything evil. There are many myths and tales about Palton's Hamo deity. Since ancient times, Mongolians have believed and worshipped Palton Hamo or Shri Devi as the goddess promoting ten white virtues and protecting all living beings from sickness, evil spirits, misfortune and evil world. On the last day of the last winter month of each year, monasteries hold the ritual of welcoming Palton Hamo deity, offering sacrifices to get good luck in coming year. Palton Hamo deity is imaged riding upon yellow mule over Sumber mountain, crossing the sea of blood and abides amidst a tent-like maelstrom of swirling green-black wind. In sutras, Palton Hamo appears with a gold tiara adorned with five jewel-topped white skulls. A flayed human skin covers her back with a long garland of blood dripping several heads around her neck. With her right hand, she wields aloft a long red sandalwood club, 
with left hand holding upturned skull, with a small human corpse in her mouth. The disc of golden sun blazes from her navel. The disc of full moon adorns her crown, and above her head floats a parasol from peacock feather that symbolizes the perfection of all her activities. Researchers claim that culmination of the present day's applique development are the artworks created by Bogtan's palace masters upon initiative of Dondok Dolam Dagini of Bog Japsun Dom Potokto, the aged. Couch and stitch with coral, pearl, and threads are used to make Bogtan's queens and aristocrats attires. Many royal attires such as dragon patterned cape of the aged bogged, torsuk hat with pearl patterned, and coral tassel of Queen Dandogdola, vest, del, crown and belt of aristocrats and Buddhist lamas are kept in the Bogtan Palace Museum, which were made of using couch and stitch one of which is a vest with pearl decorations. Historical sources tell that in the middle of 1910s, some costumes were renewed and restored in Ikure, capital city, and 12 ganzai were created from leftover silk, cotton, and crepe fabrics. Two out of them are kept in the Fine Arts Museum. These are Palting Hamo Diti ganzai. Glorious Goddess Protection Symbols or Hangal Erden. Hangal Erden or Ganzai is one full composition of illustrations of all retinues, attires, religious symbols depicted in due order that are attributed to certain deity. Ganzai means sacrifices to gods. This means the deity is ready to appear. This kind of applique painting shows all retinues of Palton Samo deity, her body, attire, accessories, symbols. Flayed skin of sinus, blue sky, raven are depicted on the top. In front of mountains surrounded by clouds, there are seven treasures, eight auspicious symbols, eight auspicious substances, as well as religious musical instruments and other symbolic items are pictured delicately using silk fabrics of different colors. It is an amazing artwork featuring Mongolian lifestyle for depicting butter sculpture, sacred horse, cattle, sheep, goat, dog, white elephant, wild animal, sacred camel. All these animals have symbolic meanings. For instance, 
Horse represents greed, bird means lust, and cattle symbolize ignorance. When sewing animal images, artists should sew it following the her direction using thread dissolving technique. Kutse was assigned the Mongolian Panchen Lama of 13th Dalai Lama. He had promoted Buddhist teachings and chanted mantras. Tibetan Simba Rinpoche visited Hure capital city early 1900s to chant mantras upon invitations. While in Mongolia, he married Mongolian Hatan. Her name was Tota Dagi. She had exceptional talent in creating applique. In the 1920s, he returned back home along with his Mongolian spouse. Upon arriving in Lhasa, the Mongolian woman had created Tanka applique for Lu Gombo Monastery. At that time, the Tibetan iconography had been well developed to create Tanka using all five applique types. People who lived in Tibet in 1970s and 1980s and later fled to India, were talking about unmatched artworks of the Mongolian woman. This is only one example. A Mongolian woman was amazing Lhasar by her embroidered tanka. Mongolians have surpassed by not only applique, but also charm costumes. Elaborating charm cape and apron by trimming method, wadding, or soft padding is used for feeding, in other words, quilting. Some garments represent different kinds of handcrafts of Mongolians. For example, chamdel or costume is made of various types of fabrics, whereas its decorations are made by applique method. Bone garlands are hanging on shoulders. Some costume consists of del, cape, apron, urujing or bone garland and belt. Sources by Damdin Suren forward that this detail made by method of quilting applique probably was made for some costume of 1811. So some garments belong to 1811 and restored and renewed in 1910. Some garments vary depending on deity the garment is dedicated to. For instance, white old man wears dead and holds a cup on his hand. Waisaravana or Kubera wears panoply, which is distinctive for being made by methods of quilting, sheets of which are custard of brass and gilt with turquoise, lapis lazuli and coral inlaid on.
Applique art has preserved only in Mongolia. There are too few countries where applique is made in traditional way. This is Mongolia who could develop applique art to its highest form throughout the history. Mongolian applique reached its real peak in the 18th and 19th centuries. Queen of Aetid Bogd, the last Hattan of Mongolia, Dandog Dolam, had frequently summoned skillful masters of Mongolia to have Hure Tanka created by them. Most Tanka appliques kept in museums had been created under direct instruction, consultation, and guidance of Iftagini. Now these artworks catch eyes both of foreigners and locals. All these marvelous masterpieces of hers are preserved in Mongolia, National Museum, Chojun Lama Temple Museum, Erdenzo Monastery, and in all museums. Both foreign and local tourists visit Kantan Tikchinda Monastery and some national museums to enjoy artworks, masterpieces of Mongolian creative arts. What do tourists really want to see? Arts and culture are the main criteria which helps the visitors to make the conclusion on the development level of any country. They see and enjoy that. Today you are presented a documentary on applique or silly painting, which is a part of the series initiated and created by Jenchiv Tivchindin Monastery about Mongolian arts and culture of 16th to 19th centuries. The next documentary will be about art casting. Jenchiv Dechilin Hiding Hambulam Shenin Dengtsil.